The legal principle called the public trust doctrine holds that legislatures and governments are trustees of the natural world with a duty to protect it for the welfare of present and future generations. Mary Christina Wood, who teaches law at the University of Oregon, is the author of a powerful book called Nature's Trust. She argues that the public trust doctrine doesn't apply only to forests, wildlife, and waterways. It also applies to the air that we breathe. That's the basis of what she calls atmospheric trust litigation, which in turn is the foundation of the Our Children's Trust legal action in the United States, arguably the most important lawsuit in the world. I grew up on the banks of the Columbia River um, at a place called Woods Landing, and it's a salmon spawning site. So I grew up watching salmon spawn and the river flowing by in all of its various um, moods and um, in all of the seasons. And, um, and that affected my, I think, environmental passion. It gave me passion to protect these natural areas. Okay, so now is this the core of it? Public trust doctrine is well established but a neglected legal principle to start with and it's associated with the politics of abundance rather than scarcity. It requires that the governing authorities act as trustees for the people of the future, and if they're failing to do that, then citizens can and should apply to the courts to require that the authorities do their legal duty. Are we close to the nub of the matter there? Yes, the, um, so the public trust, both its strength and uh, its limit, is that when you get down to enforcement, you have to look to the courts. Um, certainly citizens can take this public trust and assert it in hearings, in before legislative um, processes, they can assert it in the newspapers, they can assert it all over the place and they should. But in the end, if you have a, an agency that has a political operative as its head, um, and that is to say that political operative might have come just from industry. Like, let's take an example from the present administration, Rex Tillerson. Uh, one day he was uh, CEO of Exxon. The next day he's head of Department of State. And this was true in the Bush administration as well. So where you have political operatives in agencies, they are going to carry out their agenda really on behalf of the industry they left. And when you have that, you know, citizens can appeal and, and present the public trust time and time again. But if they are being pulled by self-interest towards whatever, and I'm not, not making a statement about our Secretary of State right now, I'm just saying generically, um, where you have political operatives, there's a danger that they might be pulled towards this industry interest. And so then the only way of really enforcing the trust is to go to the courts. Now you can't take every single environmental harm to the courts and enforce the trust. Um, and you shouldn't because the public trust is, is, a, is a constitutional concept. But where you have you know, crises on the horizon like climate crisis, um, then, the, the, then the citizens really have to go to the courts because that's where we get enforcement. It's the third branch of government. And that was the branch that was neglected at the macro level for decades in environmental law because most of the power was collected in the agencies. How does it make you feel when you think about, like you started a rock rolling down the hillside here, how do you feel when you contemplate the possible implications of this? Um, how do I feel? I, I mean, as I, a person, you know? I mean, you wake up in the morning and you think, what have I done? <laughs> right? and, no, uh, it was the vision all along of mine to just bring the public trust to the people and to the judges. Um, not only the people of this country, but I do feel that there's a, a planetary patriotism rising across this world and that everybody, whether they're in Uganda or Pakistan or Australia or the United States, that everybody now feels um, this sense of rising to our moment in time and that the public trust, it stirs something within everybody because um, the common citizens of the United States actually share more with the common citizens of Costa Rica and um, Ukraine and Japan than they do with their own governments. And so we all face the same problems and the same urgency. And I really did think that if I could just write a book that would bring the public trust to the people, 
that um, there would be just no end to how different citizens would apply that concept against their, the threats of their communities. So I, I hope that is true. And uh, this is a moment where it's, it's going to take everybody, every single person on earth, just diving in and using whatever resources they have to prevent, at this point, the prospect of runaway planetary heating. Mary Christina Wood, the law professor whose thought provides the foundation for what may be the most important lawsuit in the world. If you're interested in the use of the law as an instrument for the defense of Mother Nature, you'll want to look at our Green Rights Project at greenrights.com, which examines more than a dozen pioneering legal actions from all over the world. We've also interviewed the great climate scientist James Hansen, who is a party to the Our Children's Trust lawsuit. And take a look at our interviews with Roger Cox and Marianne Menesma, who successfully sued the government of the Netherlands to meet its obligations on climate change. For The Green Interview, I'm Silver Donald Cameron. See you next time.